Chapter 35. The Front Door. With more than a hundred soldiers following close behind him, Karnik ran up the steps leading to the entrance of the veterans' holding area. As he neared, soldiers threw open the double steel doors ready to fire, but Karnik was faster on the trigger. Without slowing his stride, he fired one round per target. As they jerked around and began to fall, he fired one more bullet into each as others alongside him did the same. Karnik had had enough of this place, and it was time to clean it out. Like a wave with Karnik in the lead, UCM soldiers flowed into the building and down the hall. Karnik didn't slow down to clear any rooms. He trusted the troops to his rear to do so, and judging from the sound of weapons fire behind him, they were doing just that. With each hallway Karnik turned down, more bullets flew from his barrel and into the flesh of those who dared to aim a gun at him. Farther down the hall, Karnik saw jail cell doors blocking his path. Without hesitation, he pulled out a grenade, yanked the pin, and heaved it down the hall as he hollered, Frag out! and knelt to the floor. Many of the soldiers behind dropped face down to the floor, just as the grenade blew. Standing up, Karnik walked into the smoke and dust created by the explosion as soldiers began to rise from the floor to follow. Nothing seemed to slow Karnik down when he had a mission to achieve. The farther Karnik went into the depths of the camp, the more civilians they found working. Not employees, but slave labor, doing repairs or simple maintenance. Each time they were overcome with joy, not just to be free once again, but knowing that there were people outside the camp still fighting. With each civilian freed, Karnik's pace picked up and his rifle fired more often. Many who followed as he moved down the halls thought he knew there would be no bullet that could harm him. Those who witnessed what he did to the UN soldiers atop the hill just outside the armory believed it as well. Turning the corner on yet another hallway, Karnik froze at the sight before him. Standing just twenty-five feet away was a barely-dressed girl with tears rolling down her face. Behind her, with a large, hairy arm wrapped around her neck and a pistol to her head, stood what looked to be some type of officer. But Karnik couldn't make out the insignia. What you doing here? The hairy-armed guy said with a strong accent that Karnik figured was from somewhere in South or Central America. Lowering his rifle to his side, Karnik took a more relaxed posture. Are you okay? Karnik asked the girl as if the foreign officer were not even there. Getting a closer look at the girl, he placed her age at no more than eighteen or twenty. Angered by being ignored, the hairy-armed man pointed his pistol from the girl to Karnik. I'm General Elpidio del Bosque, and I demand you to leave at once. Karnik continued to look the girl in the eyes as the general spoke, not only to calm her, but also to help restrain himself from killing the man before asking him any questions. It will be over in a minute, miss, Karnik said to the girl, as the hairy arm pulled her tighter. As for you, Elpidio, I have one question. Where are the veterans being kept? Karnik struggled to not kill the human waste each time he heard the girl sniffle. You let me pass, and I tell where. I also tell where the other girl is. Elpidio's face sneered as if he had something Karnik wanted. Karnik thought, what other girl could he be talking about? In a place this size, there had to be many other girls here. But what made this hairy bastard feel he knew what girl I was looking for? Karnik decided to play along. Sure, buddy. You have a deal. Good. I take this one with me for insurance, yes? Elpidio glanced down at the girl he held tight under his arm. Karnik knew he couldn't hold back from killing the man much longer and wasn't about to answer a question like that. Instead, he replied, Talk or die. Then we have a deal. Good, Elpidio said as if that made the deal binding. Those you seek are down there. The girl is on the third floor and might I say, a niña salvaje. Elpidio smiled when he spoke of the girl and Karnik couldn't bear the thought of letting him take another breath. Almost as fast as soldiers watching him could blink, Karnik raised his rifle to his shoulder and fired. The bullet struck Elpidio on the bridge of his nose, and instantly his hairy arm, along with the rest of him, fell straight to the floor. 
Before his body had settled or the smoke had finished exiting Karnik's rifle barrel, the girl ran to him. As her arms wrapped around him, Karnik looked down to her as he began removing the pack from his back. Karnik couldn't bear to let the girl be exposed any longer. Having difficulty moving with the girl holding tight, Karnik unzipped his pack and pulled out his spare jacket. Tossing the pack to one side, Karnik slung his rifle over his shoulder and then held the jacket in both hands, wrapping it around the girl. Karnik understood the girl needed help, but he also knew others did too, and that moving forward was going to be the only way to do so. You're safe now, and we have to go help the others. Karnik put a little distance between himself and the girl as he finished wrapping his jacket around her. Looking back, Karnik spotted a female soldier stepping his way and was very thankful she had. Karnik felt it was much better than another male soldier trying to lead her off after what she had been through. As the female soldier took the girl's hands, she addressed Karnik. Commander, Nina Salvage Wild Girl. Who do you think he was talking about? Soon as Karnik heard her say, Wild Girl, only one thought came to mind. Sierra. Turning around and facing the soldiers behind him, Karnik pointed at three of them. You, you, and you. Follow me. The rest of you down this hall. Move. Karnik sprinted to the stairs at the opposite end of the hall, with the three soldiers close behind, their rifles held up and ready for whatever threat presented itself. <laughs>